Hey everybody, it's Pete from Rail Manufacturing. I'm here at the HITS in Dallas 2016. I'm with Mike Ritland. Mike, I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things. First, uh, tell me about Tricos International. So Tricos International is a company I started several years ago to uh, provide working dogs for a whole host of clients. Uh, we do kind of a mixed bag of a little bit of everything. Um, essentially our, our primary focus is, is either uh, personal protection dogs for high net worth individuals or um, you know whether it's green dogs or all the way up to fully trained dogs for really any type of department uh, that that is a good fit for us we're more of a medium to small size kennel and a little more uh, specialized in terms of what we focus on so it's it's kind of a uh, as contract uh, you know per basis type type thing but uh, but that's our, our primary focus we do a little bit of breeding um, you know when it when it makes sense to excuse me maybe a litter two or a litter or two a year but uh, but that's it, you know. So that's that's kind of our primary primary gig. Okay. Um, now you're here at Hits teaching in class. What, what, what subject are you? Uh, the class I'm doing is uh, canine aggression and, and decoy work, uh, which you know, most of those classes are, are typically uh, a little more structured and a little more A plus B equals C, at least from my experience. Um, what I try to do in this one is be a little more uh, principled or uh, philosophy driven. Is uh, so that people can take the the concepts and and apply them, however you know whatever the medium is. So it's not only relegated to just bite work or uh, you know one specific police patrol setting. It's it's a little more broad spectrum than that. But. So what what do you think a a new handler can do to make the the best handler they can be? Uh, to me, there's there's two two main components. Number one is is just being consistent and, and having the drive to to want to be as good as you can possibly. I mean, to me, that's I don't care if you're talking about business or you know being an athlete or a handler, what, whatever. I mean that that's the the primary uh, trait I think that makes people successful. Number two uh, is is really putting yourself in the dog's shoes. I um, mean that's something that I preach all the time, and that you know a lot of times I think uh, we as as canine professionals get a little bit lost in the weeds in terms of what what we're trying to accomplish, uh, and we forget the very simple concept that. No matter how much sense it makes to all of us, if the dog doesn't get it, then it's a complete loss. So uh, I think one very simple thing people can do is just always try to view whatever scenario you're coming into uh, from that dog's perspective. Now your classes on also include decoys. <coughs> What's the importance of, of a decoy? How, what does that mean? Uh, to me, you know, there's a couple of assumptions that need that I think you kind of have to make. Number one is that obviously, again, the guy's motivated; he wants to be there. Number two is that he's physically fit and capable enough to to accommodate that type of work. Um, assuming that those those things are in place, uh, unquestionably, the, the key component with that is is that decoy having the knowledge base uh, and experience to be able to truly read that dog. Uh, no, no two ways about it. It's the most important aspect. That's what makes a good decoy. A good decoy is is understanding what's in that dog's mind, why he's doing what he's doing, and then using his body uh, to make micro adjustments and communicate back to that dog what it is that, that he's trying to accomplish, whatever that training plan is. All right, one last question for you. Favorite breed of dog and why? Uh, so my favorite breed of dog is not actually a breed. It's uh, it's the best dog I can find. I don't I don't give a give a damn what uh, what breed it is. I mean, if I had to pick one, um, I, I mean to me it's impossible. I, you know, I, I like Malinois and I like I mean I like really any any working breed. But but uh, to me, uh, I, I like a good dog. You know, a dog that that keeps me honest. Uh, you know, one that that's not going to let me um, you know, get away with anything unfair and, and one with enough character to, to make me think twice before I do everything. I mean, that, as, as hard as that is to find in a good dog, when I do find it, I, I love, love that character trait regardless of what the breed is. But. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, Mike. My pleasure. Always a pleasure talking to you. Likewise. Thank you.